<clears throat> all right. Uh, so we've been going through all these, and we're going to continue to do this, go through them. Um, the uh, first one, obviously, the BNSF, and we've been, we've gone through the Santa Fe, the Burlington, the Great Northern. Now we're going to do the Northern Pacific, but they didn't get any money, and so they they uh, the the official start date was uh, May eighteen sixty six, and then later they had to extend it because that was right after the war, and there were you know problems with financing and stuff like that. So. Um, so the land grant was modified by, by Congress. There's the Capitol in, uh, 1870 and they granted additional land and they did allow the sale of mortgage bonds because they, it wasn't going to happen. So meanwhile, the, um, Lake Superior and Mississippi Railroad built from St. Paul to Lake Superior and Duluth. So we can take a look at, they built this thing, which, which became the Scally line. If you remember, they used to run the, uh, the uh, oh. Milwaukee ran the Scally because the Milwaukee got trackage rights on this thing when they built it right. for 999 years. If you can imagine, these guys, <laughs> they, they were thinking big. So the uh, Milwaukee has trackage rights, which now the CP, uh, the, C, uh, the CP actually uses on the, uh, on the, uh, uh, the Great Northern line. But, but, but yeah, this, this line was built and it was very important um because that's the the np said well we don't need to go downtown duluth because it's kind of difficult to build into the city so we'll just start at the uh, thompson's junction which is west of town west of duluth on the minneapolis uh, this uh, this the uh, lake superior and mississippi railroad so you go out of town i don't know 20 miles or 30 miles or something like that so then they started heading west so in 1871 they built across minnesota into north dakota and they also started on the West End um, at Kalama, Washington, which is on the, on the Columbia River, building towards Seattle. So they were working on both ends. And so in 1872, they reached Fargo. And in 1873, they reached the Missouri River. So now they're cooking along pretty good. And they also built these big shops. You might have seen them sometime in Duluth, and, and, excuse me, in Brainerd. Brainerd big shops. Yeah. And they're still there. You can see this is the mm, modern. Yes, day. they are. Yeah, uh, it's a huge, uh, event center and all sorts of things, but they huge buildings, so they they kept them, which is nice. So the on the west end, here's Kalama, uh, Washington, right here, and so they were building this line uh, from Kalama up to Tacoma and then Seattle, and this became the only line. Uh, the Great Northern got trackage rights on it, and eventually Union Pacific got trackage rights oh, okay. on it. So today it is BNSF, and that's also where they run the coaster or whatever they call that thing that runs between Sounder. Uh, uh, Seattle Sounder. Sounder, uh, yeah. um, and, and Portland. So anyway, the, uh, in 1874, they defaulted on bond interest because their, their financing was always a little bit dodgy. And so there's, here's Wall Street. So they started to having financial problems <laughs> and they continue to have uh, financial problems. And so then partially because the NP failed, other railroads failed, they had a financial crash. And so for, for uh, seven years, not much happened. But then in 1862, they got going again and they laid 164 miles across uh, North Dakota and they finished 40 mile, 45 miles in Washington all the way up to Tacoma. And so Henry Villard was head of the uh, NP, but he also started the Oregon Railroad and Navigation Company. And so he started building this railroad east along the south bank of the columbia river and mm -hmm. and he just continued right on up because the columbia doesn't you know he didn't have to cross the columbia here the columbia river kind of flows like this and then it kind of heads north so he oh. just built all along the south bank all the way up to to uh to portland and so that became the route that the np came in and then they they just ran went down the oregon railroad navigation company to portland and then they went up to, to seattle like that but that line's now up right um yes yes the, the union, the... union pacific later got a hold of this and this became the union pacific line here it splits off and it goes goes down the, through the blue mountains to salt lake city yes you are absolutely correct yeah. and the bnsf is on the north side of the river yes they built they built the, the uh, spokane portland and yeah. seattle on the north side you're absolutely yeah. correct yeah and so um so then the NP said, you know, we don't want to, we, we want to have our own railroad into, into uh, Seattle, in Tacoma. And this is a long 
convoluted way to go. <clears throat> you have to go all the way down here like this and back up to Seattle. So they they started building this thing, and they did pretty well. Of course, then they had the the again in the Cascades, like they ran into on the Great Northern. So they built they went over Stampede Pass, and initially they had these horrible um, switchbacks like they have down in Peru, uh, and then they built a tunnel. And then they expanded the tunnel, and the and the Stampede Tunnel is still there, and it was closed when they when the BN merged, but later they opened it up again because for heavy trains, it's it's uh, much better. And as we talked about with the Great Northern, the the way they built the Cascade uh, Tunnel on a grade, they take they can only run one train per hour, and oh, yeah. fans to clear the thing out. So they needed the cast the Stampede Tunnel too, and so. Uh, in 1883, a million-dollar bridge was built across the Missouri River between Bismarck and Mandan. And one of our crew is in charge of replacing that bridge right now. Ah. It's going to be a huge project. And it's tricky because, of course, there's 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 issues with the river and everything. And this thing comes, comes across the river and then it makes a sharp jog to the south. And uh, and so there's land issues, and it's hard to find places con for construction and stuff like that. But anyway, he's working on that. The BNSF has to replace that bridge. So by 1883, trains were running between Livingston and St. Paul. And so Henry Villard pushed hard to lay, lay, uh, lay more track. And then in 1884, all of a sudden, Wall Street realized that the, the, uh, um, the Northern Pacific had this long line and, and these branch lines hadn't been built, this long line with very little traffic, as opposed to the Great Northern. They, they compared it to the Great Northern, which was profitable and, and had all these lines up here. And so the NP had this long line. And, and, uh, and so the Wall Street investors drove the stock price down. And so Villard, Henry Villard had to leave the NP. And then they went through a series of management changes. Um, meanwhile, the NP was looking for a logo. And so uh, one of the NP managers was at uh, the 1893 World's Fair in Chicago. And mm -hmm. he saw the Korean flag with the yin and the yang. And he said, you know, that's really cool. Let's use that as our logo. And so they did. And so the logo, this is the logo. Initially, it just said Northern Pacific and then the Yellowstone Park line. And then later they changed it to Northern Pacific Railway. And, and uh, that lasted from 1893 until, until the merger in 1970 and so that was a, quite a class they never got sued like you do nowadays yeah uh no i suppose maybe the maybe the koreans thought it was pretty cool i don't know <laughs> yeah they it's may cool. not have known yeah they may not have known who knows uh, communications are different than what that's, they are today, that's right know? we're talking you know 1893 and so in in 1970 um, the Bur Burlington Northern was finally merged because uh, Jim Hill had tried to do it back in 18 in the late 1800s uh, by merging the Great Northern, Northern Pacific, Chicago, Burlington, and Quincy, and CNS and SPNS. Now, as we talked about last time, the GN and the NP owned the the uh, each owned half of the about half of the Burlington, the CNS, and the SPNS. So it was it was just basically merging the GN and the NP and then wrapping everything in. So uh, one of the big things they had to give. Uh, uh, the, the reason they were able to do it, uh, ironically, was because of the Milwaukee Road. And, of course, the UP was out there, too. But the Milwaukee Road was parallel. So they said, well, there's competition. But ironically, the BN merger put the Milwaukee Road out of business. <laughs> yeah, they, yeah. You know, they got They're all sorts already. of concessions. And Milwaukee was able to go into Portland. And they all of a sudden had all this traffic. But because they, because they had built the Pacific Line and they never really recovered financially, they went for years. They had not maintained the track, and so in the in the um, after the merger, they had all sorts of traffic, but they just couldn't haul it. And they had a lot of derailments. It was really sad. So that's the history of the NP. Now we'll look at a little bit at the. Um, um, we'll start up here at, at some of their just kind of typical steam locomotives and some of their characteristics. <clears throat> 